Oh, hey there. Uh, you want to learn about cognitive functions today? You know, I get this question a lot in the comments. What are cognitive functions? And how do they work into our understanding of the 16 Myers-Briggs personalities? Getting into cognitive functions can really deepen your understanding of the 16 personalities. So many things, so many things make so much more sense about personality types once you start understanding functions. I mean, you can get an okay picture of the 16 personalities if you're just using the four letters of the personality types, like is someone an introvert or an extrovert, are they a thinker or a feeler, etc. And if you're studying traditional Myers-Briggs or you're looking on 16personalities.com or whatever, that's as far as they go. It just, it just leaves a lot of information and a lot of insight off the table. But look, I'll tell you, cognitive functions are pretty easy to pick up. In this video, I'll explain what cognitive functions are in general, some principles about them, how they make up a personality type, what a function stack is, and how to know what the cognitive functions for each personality type are. This is gonna be a long video. <laughs> okay, let's get, let's get going. What are cognitive functions? functions. I mean, it was good to start at a basic level, you know, like what, what are we even talking about when we say cognitive function? This is an idea that was put forward by Carl Jung when he wrote Psychological Types. Where is it? Uh, when he wrote Psychological Types. And for him, to oversimplify, cognitive functions are processes of the psyche. They are ways that we become aware of information and to a degree make conclusions about what is real. They are also processes of making decisions. And you heard me talk about those two things before on this channel a lot because that's ultimately what Myers-Briggs and the 16 personalities comes down to. Perceiving means how we become aware of reality. Perceiving is intuition and sensing. Those are the two ways that we take in information and organize it. Sensing has to do with the facts, the details, and what is provable Intuition has to do with the concepts, the patterns, and what is possible. Feeling and thinking are the processes by which we make decisions or judgments. Feeling is judging things based on value or appropriateness, uh, whereas thinking is judging things based on if they will make sense and get a result. If you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you probably know that already. And you're like, Frank, I'm bored. I'm falling asleep over here. I wish I... <laughs> I'm gonna save this video for later when I'm having trouble falling asleep. I'm just gonna watch this. It'll put me right out. Yeah, okay, I get it. I'm moving on. Now, cognitive functions are just taking those four basic things, intuition, sensing, thinking, and feeling, and then saying, actually, we can split those up even more because there's not just one type of thinking. There's two types of thinking. There's not just one type of intuition. There's two types. And those two types of each of those four things we just talked about are the two attitudes, which sounds special, <laughs> but the two attitudes are just introverted and extroverted. I mean, that's something you've definitely heard before. But what does that mean? How can thinking or feeling be introverted or extroverted? What's the difference? All right, so generally when cognitive functions are extroverted, they're outward focused. They're not as personal. They are broader in scope. They gather in more information. When functions are introverted, they're inward focused. They're personal. They're narrower but deeper in scope. They like to organize and narrow down. So let's go through the eight functions briefly and in the future I will do more in-depth descriptions of each function. I mean like future videos, but for now, this will get us started. I'll also take this as an opportunity to explain to you all the shorthand that the personality nerds use for each of the cognitive functions. Okay, so there is introverted sensing and extroverted sensing. That's SI and SE. So you have S for sensing and then you just put a little I next to it for introverted or a little E next to it for extroverted. That's the nerdy shorthand for the functions. 
pretty cool, right? So sensing is looking at the facts and what is provable. Introverted sensing is more focused on organizing that information and even just organizing stuff in the real world, like getting the books on the bookshelf in the right order. Whereas extroverted sensing is focused on gathering new information and new experiences. Well, hey, you already know two cognitive functions. Wow. Okay, then there's introverted intuition, N-I, and extroverted intuition, N-E. Introverted intuition wants to narrow down things into as few abstract concepts as possible, whereas extroverted intuition wants to continually gather and create new connections. So those four functions we just covered are the four cognitive functions for perceiving. Now let's move on to the four judging functions. So there's introverted thinking and extroverted thinking, that's T-I and T-E. Introverted thinking is a process of making logical decisions with the self as the decision maker, whereas extroverted thinking aims to make logical decisions that are focused outwards and rely on others' input. Of course, this is a very general description, there's a lot more to it, but I'm just trying to give you the quick explanation. And then we have introverted feeling and extroverted feeling, FI and FE. Introverted feeling is the process of making decisions based on what the person themselves values, whereas extroverted feeling is the process of making decisions based on what is more broadly valued. Those are the eight cognitive functions. That's it. Now you know what they are, you know a bit about them, and you know the special little symbols for each of them. And you know you're really cool when instead of saying like extroverted feeling, you just say F-E. That is so rad. In the next part of the video, we're gonna explore how cognitive functions make up each personality type. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Now let's go a bit farther into cognitive function theory and how each type is made up of cognitive functions. So think of a personality type like a molecule. And the cognitive functions are the individual elements that make up the molecule. All right, first of all, a really important thing you need to know is that each cognitive function is not just floating out there on its own in a vacuum. Each cognitive function is attached to its opposite. Say what? <laughs> Think of it like a magnet. Each magnet has opposite poles. People in the audience are like, I've never used a magnet. I don't know what you're talking about, Frank. Magnets, how do they work? You know, they have a north and south pole. Likewise, each cognitive function has an opposite pole. It's the other side of the coin. Cognitive functions are always linked together with their opposite, no matter what. Well, what do we mean by opposite? Well, not only do we mean the opposite process, so the opposite of thinking is feeling and vice versa, the opposite of sensing is intuition and vice versa, but we also mean the opposite attitude. And remember, by attitude, we just mean introverted or extroverted. So, for example, if you were to take introverted sensing SI for the cool kids, its opposite cognitive function, which is always attached to it, is, that's right, extroverted intuition, NE. The opposite of sensing is intuition, and the opposite of introversion is extroversion. <laughs> My tongue got a little slow there. SI and NE are always joined together, and this pairing of two opposite functions is often called an axis. Starting to make sense? I hope so or I'll be really embarrassed. <laughs> All right, so uh, doing a little math here, there are four pairings of opposites, four axes. So look at extroverted thinking. The opposite is introverted feeling. Those two are always together. And extroverted feeling and introverted thinking are always linked together. You might ask, could introverted sensing and introverted intuition be paired together? Or introverted feeling and extroverted feeling? The answer is no. My name is no, my sign is no, my number is no. Not in the same personality type. Cognitive functions work exclusively in opposites. So if your personality type has one cognitive function, it must also have the opposite. For example, to, be <laughs> to belabor this point and beat it to death, if your personality type has extroverted sensing, that personality type also has to have introverted intuition somewhere in its function stack. 
and I'll explain what a stack is a little bit later. This is why I always say everyone has everything when talking about personality type, because everyone has thinking, feeling, sensing, and intuition. Why is this? Why must it be that cognitive functions are always in these pairs? Well, the theory is that when a cognitive function is conscious to you, or to use the Myers-Briggs terms, if it is what your type prefers, then it's opposite. The function you don't prefer is being suppressed by your psyche. So for example, if you prefer to use feeling to make decisions, you are overusing feeling to the detriment of thinking. Hate to break it to you, but the non-preferred functions are often a source of pain and fear. So if you prefer introverted feeling, for example, you have extroverted thinking, but you don't prefer it. It's gonna be something you try to ignore or suppress, perhaps something that is not entirely conscious to you. It's gonna be a source of pain and fear in your life. Sound fun? <laughs> All right, we'll come back to that a little bit later, but right now we're gonna talk about the dominant function. That's, that's a bit more fun. So each personality type has what is called a dominant cognitive function. This is a personality type's first function. It's the single cognitive function that dominates what a personality type is all about. So when Carl Jung was talking about the psychological types, when he first came up with all this stuff, he was only talking about eight personality types. He was talking about the eight cognitive functions in the dominant position. So for each cognitive function, there are two personality types that have it as their dominant function. So as an example, both INTP and ISTP have introverted thinking, or TI, as their dominant function. Introverted thinking is the most influential cognitive function to those two types. So if you are astute, you might have done some math and realized, hey, that's only eight personality types. And of course, 16 personalities is where it's at. You know what I'm saying? So how do we go from eight cognitive functions to 16 personalities? Well, Carl Jung, when he was talking about the psychological types, he was talking mostly about the dominant function, the eight cognitive functions, but then he said, yeah, but you know, you got like a secondary function also probably that you use. That's exactly how he wrote it. Then Catherine Briggs and Isabel Briggs Myers came along and they were like, well, crap, that would seem to indicate that there's actually 16 personalities. For instance, you have the introverted intuitive psychological type. So this type has NI, introverted intuition, as the dominant function. That's great, but at some point, that type is gonna have to make some decisions and use some judgment, because if you recall, intuition is a perceiving function. It's just about you know becoming aware of information, which means means you need to use thinking or feeling at some point, right? Myers and Briggs were like, well, that means there's got to be two different types of introverted intuitives. Both have the same dominant cognitive function, introverted intuition, but they have different decision-making functions. So there's the INFJ who prefers to use feeling to make decisions, and there's the INTJ who prefers to use thinking to make decisions. That's how they came up with the 16 personalities and the four-letter types. What that means is not only do you have a dominant cognitive function, but you also have a second preferred function, what's often called an auxiliary cognitive function. You could just call it your second function, but the nerds call it auxiliary. Uh, <laughs> so I'm probably gonna go back and forth in this video. Don't get confused. Second function, auxiliary function means the same thing. Your dominant function is either a perceiving or a judging function, right? So your second function is gonna be the other one. For example, if you have a dominant perceiving function, whether that's intuition or sensing, your second function is gonna be thinking or feeling. Or if you have it the other way around where your dominant function is thinking or feeling, your auxiliary function is gonna be intuition or sensing. What this means is each type has a preferred judging function, thinking or feeling, as well as a preferred perceiving function, intuition or sensing. One of those is dominant, it's the head honcho, it's the big cheese, and the other is auxiliary, secondary, it's the helper, it's supportive, it's just, it's just wonderful. And that's where the four letter type comes from that you get on your 16 personalities test. Those two letters in the middle of your personality type 
Those are your two preferred functions, your one and your two, your dominant and your auxiliary. So you might wonder, looking at your personality type letters, how do you figure out which is your dominant and which is your auxiliary? To answer that, first we gotta talk about another principle which follows along with this broader concept of things needing to be balanced out with their opposites. We'll get all into that in the next part of the video. So take a breather, Get a little snack and a good cookie and juice <laughs> and stay tuned. Welcome back. So how do you figure out your dominant and your second functions? Well, Myers and Briggs were like, well, personalities need to be balanced out, right? So if my dominant function is introverted, then my second function has got to be extroverted. Or if my dominant function is extroverted, then my second function should be introverted. The first and second cognitive functions, the two preferred functions, have got to be opposite attitudes. One introvert, one extrovert, to bring balance to the psyche. For example, if your first function is introverted sensing, it's an introverted function and it's a perceiving function. So your second function has got to be extroverted and it's gotta be a judging function, right? So ISFJs have introverted sensing as their dominant function. So we see SF as the two letters in the middle. We know sensing is dominant, so feeling is the second function. And since the dominant function is introverted, then the second function is extroverted. So we have extroverted feeling as an ISFJ's second function. Or an ENFP, their first function is extroverted, extroverted intuition. The second function must be introverted, introverted feeling. That was fast, but we're gonna go through it a bit slower with more examples in a bit, so don't freak out. Now that I've explained all that about the opposite attitude of the second function, I can give you the secret code to figure out the cognitive functions for your type. And as I'm explaining this, I'm like, gosh, this seems so complicated when I'm explaining it from scratch. When you're first trying to soak this in, it's easy to get lost. But don't get frustrated, <laughs> because I felt the same way when I was first learning this. I was like, what the frick? But look, it just takes a little bit of time. I picked it up quick. Just take your time, and one day, I promise you, it will click. Okay, let's get into some examples so you can learn this stuff. Let's say you have an ENFJ. That's the type we're gonna look at as an example. How do I know which is the dominant function and the auxiliary function and whatever? Now, we know that the dominant and auxiliary functions have to be intuition and feeling because that's what's right in the middle, right there, the two preferred cognitive functions, right? Okay, so we look at the first letter. The first letter is how we know if the dominant function is introverted or extroverted. That's really what the I or E of a type means. It doesn't mean that you are shy or you're outgoing. It means, is your dominant function introverted or extroverted? Which doesn't necessarily make you an introvert or extrovert in the common understanding understanding of the word. Anyway, we can put a, a little E right here. We know the dominant function is extroverted for an ENFJ. Now, how do we know if the dominant function for an ENFJ is extroverted intuition or is it extroverted feeling? Hmm, well, here's Myers-Briggs little trick here, right? You look at the last letter of the type. Now stay with me. The first extroverted cognitive function is what is represented by the last letter. The reason that this gets confusing is because that's different for an E-type and an I-type. That's why we're starting with an E-type because this is the easier type to decode. So we look here, there's a J at the end. That means the first extroverted function for the ENFJ is a judging function. What are the judging functions? thinking and feeling. So we know feeling is extroverted for an ENFJ and we know the dominant function is extroverted and there we go. FE, extroverted feeling, is the dominant function for an ENFJ. So then we know that an ENFJ's second function must be intuition and because it's gotta be the opposite attitude of the dominant function, it's introverted. So an ENFJ's second function is NI introverted intuition. I know this seems like confusing at first, but stick with me. We're gonna do more examples, and in no time flat, this will be second nature to you. I promise you, once you learn this, it will change how you look at the 16 personality types forever, 
and you will get so much more value out of it. All right, let's go with an ENTP as our next example. We know the first letter tells us that the dominant function is extroverted. Then we gotta ask ourselves, is it extroverted intuition or is it thinking? Well, we look here, we got a P at the end. So the first extroverted function is a perceiving function, which is intuition right here. So extroverted intuition, and it's an extroverted type, so the dominant function is extroverted, so we know an ENTP's dominant function is extroverted intuition. Now, let's make it tricky. Let's look at an introvert type. Their dominant function is introverted, so the last letter of the type, the J or the P, is actually describing the second auxiliary function not the dominant like it did with the extroverts. So for an example, let's look at the INFJ. We know that the dominant function is gonna be introverted because there's an I at the beginning. So is it introverted intuition or is it introverted feeling? I kind of gave away the answer a little bit earlier. <laughs> the J here tells us that the first extroverted cognitive function for an INFJ is a judging function which is feeling, but remember, an introverted type has their extroverted function second. Their dominant function is introverted. You'll also remember I just said that for the introverts, the last letter is describing their second function. So, because we know that the feeling is extroverted, that means it can't be the dominant function. So now we know that intuition must be the dominant function for the INFJ, so we have NI, introverted intuition. Let's do one more example. We'll look at an INTP. Can you pick up on this by now? So what does the I mean? The I means the dominant function for the INTP is introverted. Cool, that was easy, right? We know that the dominant function is one of these two letters in the middle. Then we go to the last letter here, which is what? That's right, the first extroverted cognitive function. This tells us that the first extroverted function is a perceiving function, which is intuition, right? Any -E. extroverted intuition is the first extroverted function, but it's an introvert type, so it's not the dominant function here. So we can tell that it's actually introverted thinking that is the dominant function for the INTP. So that's how you can use the letters of a type to break down what their first two cognitive functions are, the dominant function and the auxiliary function, the two preferred functions. In the next part of the video, we're gonna get into the non-preferred functions because you remember what I said, cognitive functions don't exist in a vacuum. So we talked about the dominant function. Well, guess what? That's connected to its opposite function. And your auxiliary function is also connected to its opposite function. And those functions can cause you problems. So stay tuned. Okay, welcome back. We're gonna talk about the non-preferred functions now and how they all fit together. And what we're talking about, what we're building here, is what is referred to as a cognitive function stack. Every personality type of the 16 personalities has four cognitive functions in their stack. We've already talked about the first two, the other two are just the opposites of the first two. All right, let's do a little drawing. So we have our dominant function and we have our auxiliary function and those are our two preferred functions. And these are the two letters in the middle of your type, right? The dominant function is the star of the show. That's the defining thing about our personality and the auxiliary function is like the helper. It really helps to serve the dominant function. But like I said, these two have opposites that they're always gonna be linked to. You can't get away from it. The auxiliary function has its opposite, which is called the tertiary function, but you can just call it the third function if you want, right? <laughs> and this is not preferred. This is the opposite of the auxiliary. If your auxiliary is extroverted feeling, for example, what's the opposite of that? it's gonna be introverted thinking, right? So the third function, yeah, it's not preferred. You don't love it. You'd rather use your second function than your third. It causes you some problems in life, but it's like, ah, you know, I can figure out a way to kind of use that every once in a while. It's not the scariest thing in the world. If you go to my video, how do the types develop in the card above my head, whoa, you will see how I talk about that third function starting to come into play when you're in your late teens, early adulthood, something like that. You start to become a bit more aware of it. But the cognitive function that causes the most problems and the one that's going to bite you in the booty one day or every day is the opposite one 
of the dominant function. That is your fourth function. It's called the inferior function. So let's say for an example, you're an INFJ, you have introverted intuition dominant. So what's the opposite of that? It's extroverted and the opposite of intuition is sensing. So you have extroverted sensing as your inferior function. And notice this, your second function and your third function are there in the middle. The opposite of the second function is right next to it. They're relatively balanced. If you look at this as a chart of like how balanced things are in your personality, you've got the dominant function at the very top. It's what your whole life is all about. It looms large. The helper function is right here doing its thing, hanging out, and then you go down to the third one. You don't prefer it, but it's not too out of whack, relatively balanced. But then you get down to the fourth one, and this one is like way out of whack. You see, it's all the way down here. It's the fourth function, and the polarity here between the dominant and the inferior function is theoretically the defining problem of each personality type. That's because you are so invested in your dominant function that you are, to an equal degree, suppressing the inferior function. You know, as an example, INTPs, your dominant function is introverted thinking, so what's the opposite of that? Extroverted feeling, that's right, that's your inferior function, that's the thing that you are suppressing the most. We got a lot of INFPs watching, introverted feeling is your dominant function, extroverted thinking, the opposite, is your most suppressed function, your inferior function. That's gonna be the biggest thing, the biggest imbalance that causes the big, biggest, <laughs> it's gonna cause a lot of problems in your life is what I'm trying to say. And it's not the function in and of itself that causes you problems, it's the fact that the function is out of balance, it is being ignored, it is being suppressed. You're probably a little aware of it, like you can use it a little bit, just because a function is not preferred doesn't mean you can't use it because you have to be able to use all of your functions just to be like a functioning human being, right? But you suppress it, you don't wanna use it. If you can get away with not using it and using your preferred functions, that's what you're gonna do. And this is the function stack of every type. You have four functions. So now that you know the formula to figure out the stack, the function stack based on the four letters of the type, I wanna challenge you to go through and figure out the function stack for various personalities, heck, Try to do it for all 16 and then just Google it. Google function stack ISFP, function stack INTJ, whatever type it is, and see if you are correct or not. Thanks for watching. Check out another video here about how the 16 personalities interact or check out the whole playlist right here and find another video that piques your interest. And until next time, stay cool and attractive.